When I'm setting courses at home and when I'm thinking about what we do at home to make your riding better, not just for the show, but just better in general, I feel like simplifying is one of the best words that you can think of when you're talking about what you want to do, what kind of exercises that you want to do to try to make your riding better. Um, and so when I'm setting a course, oftentimes I actually think in a way of um, the typical hunter course of side diagonal, side diagonal. Um, symmetry is important, that you do enough on one lead and enough on another lead, that you have both leads represented. Um, I try to have two different combinations, one entering with an oxer, one entering with a vertical. Um, I like to, for more sophisticated riding, have some bending lines, one bending right, one bending left. So those are sort of the basic simple things. But then I think it's important to think about training course riding. Um, what you're jumping is, actually what you're not jumping is as important as what you're jumping. So that when I'm setting a course, I will set a line and then you have this whole space between one line to the next line. So I think of them as each one as an individual exercise so that you do a line and then you spend the time between line number one and line number two reorganizing what it is that you're doing so that all the time, instead of you getting this snowball effect of the course getting faster and faster or the, the horse getting more and more out of control, you can do a line, regroup, do a line, regroup, do a line, regroup, and so on and so on. And that to me is the best way to work on training the horse and the rider to make rounds the best that they can be from start to finish. And I feel like that's a really important concept for both yourself and also trainers, people who are training other people, to think about that. Think about simplifying what it is that you're doing, breaking it up into different sections, making each section as good as the, the earlier section, with different challenges, different questions. So we have one line that might be a little bit long, one line that's actually three jumps in a row. So you have um, a little bit of a long distance to a little bit of a short distance and the ability to um, change up the horse and do lengthening and shortening, bending left, bending right, all these different little exercises, but trying not to make it too extreme, trying to make it simple rather than complicated. Um, and I feel like that's, that's sort of a philosophy when I think about simplifying what we're doing at home. That's a philosophy that I try to use um, in all of my jumping sessions, no matter what it is that we're doing, whether it's equitation, whether it's jumpers or m my event riders, it's all very similar. So in, in your course building, you know, not everybody has the luxury of having an endless supply of jumps and rails to work on. Um, let's say you only have three or four jumps to work on. Then I would suggest you at different times set a different line or a different example. So for me, when I set a course, I usually set an opening line that sometimes is bending. Hopefully you have enough room to make it be a six or seven or even an eight. And I used to, I like to set the line actually on the half stride. So let's say we set it at seven and a half and it's oxer to vertical and a little bit of a bending line. And that's my starter line almost always where I actually do one more stride where you jump into the line. Usually when horses start in a course, they jump the first jump and off they go. You know, they sort of start to almost try to run away. And so I like to do jump a jump and then maybe make them fit one extra stride in. And it's not a full stride. We're not doing an eight and a seven stride line. We're doing an eight in a, in a seven and a half. So you, you, you have this mental exercise for the horse that you start your course and then all of a sudden, instead of you kick and charge forward, you jump a jump and you say, hey, stay with me, stay polite, 
Listen to me, keep listening to me here. It's the, for me, I find for higher level jumping and also for other jumping, if you start with a line that's slightly steadier than what you would normally do, it's the best way to teach the horse to stay with you and stay calm in the course. If you do the other way around, you start a line that's a little bit too long, it's almost like you're teaching the horse to jump the first jump and then off you go and you, you lose that communication, that control. So that's a really good exercise that I find when you're starting a course. Then we've talked about the gymnastic line of two, two, two. Um, that takes four pairs of standards. You know, that's a wonderful line that you can set up. Maybe you have to do three, but that's a wonderful line to gymnastically get your horse jumping in a better shape. Um, I love to do uh, an exercise of a bending line to a bending line. So you can do a curving six to a curving seven or a curving six to a curving six. I don't like to do bending fours, for example. I find that's to be actually too short. Um, but let's say you don't have enough room in your ring. Practice a curving five, you know, or a curving six line. So you come in on one lead and then you land and you leave on another lead. That's a wonderful exercise to practice. Um, if you're really short of space, I've talked a little bit about jumping an oxer, doing maybe five strides to a bounce or six strides to a bounce. Again, a short distance and then five or six strides to another jump. A wonderful exercise to work with. And then finally, one of my favorite lines to set up is uh, oxer, sometimes with a Liverpool underneath and then five strides to a vertical one stride oxer combination with a little bit of an open distance um, in the five stride line. Um, that I find for higher level jumping is a very difficult line to jump. Um, and for green horses, they have to learn jumping uh, a, on an open stride vertical oxer combination, that's very difficult. So I, I like to repeat that exercise a lot. I find that to be very, very educational for both horse and rider. So another, another, again, if you have a lot of jumps or even if you have a few jumps, I find one of the most important training tools um, that I've learned to use over years of working with horses in particular, but this also works for riders, is to break up your course training. So for example, let's say you only have two lines uh, to work on, or if you have a whole course to work on. Do a line, and then in the middle of the short end, if your horse gets this sort of adrenaline, then walk. Halfway around the middle of the short end, walk, and then pick up the canter, and then start again, or make a circle and then start again. But try to, all the time, keep checking your horse that in the course, you get back to the same canter that you wanted from the beginning. And that's really important. And I do that even if you have a horse that gets quick in a line. So let's say you set up a six stride line or a seven stride line and you jump into the line and the horse actually runs under and you get really deep in seven. You know, it's a seven and they just get, keep getting deep and they're going faster in the line. You need usually to have a person help you with this, but have a person go and stand in front of the second jump. Canter into the line, jump the first jump of the line, and then just come to the walk. Not slam them to the halt and again on the ends of the rings. It's not running them into the wall. That's not productive. It's quietly bringing them down, making a transition to the walk in the, in the line or in the course. That dissipates the horse's energy in its head and it gets the horse to stop staring at the jump and thinking run, but to actually look back or think back to the rider and think of you as the rider. And so you're establishing this communication throughout the round, from the beginning of the round to the end of the round, where all the time the horse is actually listening to you, not seeing the jump and just running. And that's a really important training tool that I've, I, 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 I find is one of the most valuable training tools that you can use in your course training to make your rounds better. And again, we all the time want to work on that the course, the quality of the round is as good at the beginning as it is at the end. So in the end, I'm going to leave you some examples of courses or pieces of courses that you can 
uh, set yourself at home and some different ideas and concepts of course building that you can set at home. And now let's go out and we'll do some of these exercises and I can show you how I use these exercises to make your writing better. This next session, we're going to talk about uh, jumping a whole course. And um, I've here an example for you. I have a course that I use quite often, which asks a lot of different questions. It's not super complicated, but it's complicated enough that it really is appropriate for almost any horse and rider, um, whether it be equitation, whether it be jumpers, whether it be uh, even uh, eventers. This is a great training course to use to practice to get ready for competition. Um, you can also set this course at home just, just for your own practicing for whatever it is that you want to do. And um, once we have this course built, then I'm gonna show you how to walk a course and how to make a plan and how to strategize. And I'll talk about the little nuances of how this course is set, which I think is appropriate for at-home training. A Little bit different than maybe a course that might be at the show, but this is a course that I set that I find is the most productive, most helpful for training your horse at home. And so when we're talking about the details of setting a course at home, you really wanna have a plan so that the course makes sense from start to the beginning. I usually like to start with a collected line and then do sometimes some gymnastic or a bending line and then sometimes open the stride and then sometimes collect the stride. So it's important that you think about having a lot of different questions, bending right, bending left, maybe a combination from the left lead, maybe a combination from the right lead, one entering from a vertical, one entering from an oxer. Um, this course that we have is a simplified course, um, but I think it's very appropriate for almost anything that you wanna do. And so sometimes maybe you don't have the amount of equipment that we have here for this um, masterclass, but you can use pieces of this course and you can tr build each different piece on a different day and then do parts of it together. Maybe you can't do the whole thing, but at least these are good exercises that you can use. Any one of these lines you can use at home to try to improve your um, full course riding. So I'm gonna show you now how I walk a course uh, together with Skylar Wireman. We're gonna do a, a, a nice brief course walk of the, the exercises that I've set up uh, for today and for this uh, masterclass and also for you to set up at home. And so it's important, we're gonna talk about all the details of walking a course and um, the distances and how you'd ride each of these different lines. So we're gonna start off, I always start off with a simple line, usually starting with an oxer. I can come to this oxer from both leads, which I like, and it's a slight bending line to a vertical. The vertical is set quite low right now, but that's because that's gonna be our warm-up vertical. And eventually when we get to jumping the whole course, um, this will be our first to second fence, this black, black and white line. It's an oxer, and then it's a quiet seven strides to the vertical. So I start in the middle of the oxer. Now, this isn't what we're starting over. We will have already warmed up. We will, will have already jumped the vertical to warm up, the oxer to warm up. Then we start with the first line. So here's the first line. I'm gonna get right in the middle and I'm gonna pace off. For me, I step eight, ste uh, sorry, eight paces, which are three foot paces for the first stride and four for every stride after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six. And a big step. So really in an equitation course, for example, this would be a six stride line all day long, easy. But for me in training, I always like to start off jumping into a line and actually making the horse wait. So we're gonna do this line in seven for training. And I find that's a really good way to work on the rideability of your horse and get your horse organized, listening, being polite in the course. Very important, you see I have these guide poles on the landing. Very important that you land and before you think about cutting into the right, you think about a straight line, land, slow down, 
train your horse, organize your horse, get him balanced, get him where we want. Okay, because next we're gonna have a right hand turn to a jump that's gonna come up quite quickly if you let your horse cut in. So at home, you wanna train your horse to stay out on the turns rather than cutting in because when you're, when you're cutting in, then you're, you're losing the control, you're losing the rideability. Obviously, in a speed class, you would make short turns, but we're not doing a speed class here at home. We're training our horses to be polite. So we stay out as much as we can. Here we have a nice vertical. This is a bending line to an oxer and then a straight line to a vertical. It's gonna ride a nice easy six to a nice easy three. Again, I think it's important when you're training horses, you set your line slightly shorter than normal. So Skylar's gonna ride this tomorrow. She's gonna jump in, stay out a little bit in the six, balance the horse, organize the horse, and have a nice oxer right in the center. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, two, one, two, three. Again, slightly short, organizing the horse, teaching the horse to wait. Now this ring, you know, this is not a big, huge field or it's not a big, huge ring. So in a bigger ring, you'd have just a slight more pace. So the lines would want, you'd want to make the lines a little bit longer, but in this ring that's a little bit tight, we try to organize it so that the horse stays polite all the time. Then, a little bit the same thing. We've got a, a right bend, right turn to a vertical. So we have to think about landing from this jump and not cutting into the right, but actually steering out a little bit left. Travel, make sure you collect your horse on this moment. Stay out, get organized, use your eyes to look to the next jump, but don't cut in. So this next jump is set a little bit on an angle. So we come out of the turn and jump it absolutely how it's, how it's set, very straight. We're gonna put a little bit of a curve to the next jump, that's a Swedish oxer. We're gonna have a curve in five and a curve in five. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. So if you ride this with a little bit of a curve, it should be a nice normal five strides. Get to this jump absolutely in the center, straight, and then put a little bit of a curve in the five stride to the next oxer. So we have one curve right, one curve left. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, two. Two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. Center to center. If you take this line too direct, it's going to be a little bit too deep. So you want to ride a curve and ride a curve. It's good to practice. You're going to bend right and you're going to bend left. Then make sure again you land from the oxer, travel straight organize the horse on the landing, and then get ready for the next line. So we'll just walk that track. It's always a good idea when you're walking the course to walk the track that you're gonna take. So we're gonna stay out here. Get straight to this last line. Here we have a Liverpool which is spooky for a lot of horses. Always good to practice a Liverpool at home so that the horses are confident with the Liverpool. Here we have a nice Liverpool. And then this line is a, is a line that I love to use at home. It's a nice five strides to a one stride vertical oxer combination. And that's a, especially as it starts to get bigger, that's actually a difficult combination for horses to jump. So I love to practice it at home. And I like to do it off of a Liverpool also because it gives the horse a lot of forward energy because you have to ride a little stronger to the Liverpool. And so then you have to sort of reorganize and get your horse polite in the five strides and then have them jump a vertical ox or combination.
One, two, three, five. Normal five strides. Nice one. We'll walk that. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice one. Straight line at the end and finish. So this gives you left lead line, right lead line, right lead and left lead line, and a left lead line to end. You have different oxers, verticals, in and out of the turn, out of the turn to an oxer, out of the turn to a vertical. We have a Liverpool, we have a combination. So we have a lot of different things to work on, to practice, and uh, to train our horses for their rideability. This is a good course to set up at home. It's, it's simple, but it's also complicated because of the size of this ring. And I think when you see us do this course, you'll, it'll be very interesting to learn all the different things that we do to make the horse jump this course really well. Just to go back and talk about walking the lines, the horse has a landing stride. So when we're watching a horse, we go land one, two, three, four, five, however many strides the line is. So when I walk the course, I have, you have to walk eight steps or 24 feet for the land. You have a landing stride and then the first stride. So I do eight steps for the first stride and then four for every stride after that. That's usually based on a 12 foot stride. This ring, it's a little bit smaller than a really big competition ring. So we set the lines a little bit shorter. So you're gonna ride this course more on a 10 foot stride rather than on a 12 foot stride. And when you're getting into a big open field or say the, the, the main ring in Wellington, which is a big ring, you see horses, the, the lines are much different. They're much longer. But for training at home in a ring like this, this is a good, good, set course for this ring. It's appropriate for this ring and it's also appropriate for training your horses. I like to train on a little bit shorter stride at home because always at the show the horse picks up and goes with a little bit more energy and it, it meets the right amount of stride when you're at the horse show. Mm -hmm.